Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, Stephen King at his best and also his worst. It's my review of the Dark Tower series. So before I start, there will be spoilers in this video, but not straight away. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a general spoiler-free review of the Dark Tower series, give my you know my thoughts on the series, tell you a little bit about what it's about, um, but without any spoilers at all. I will then give an indication that I'm moving into spoiler territory. There are two things about this series I really, really want to talk about, um, but I can't talk about those without spoiling it. Um, so I will let you know when that's going to happen, and if you haven't read the series yet and you intend to read it, then that's, that's your cue to, to stop watching. Um, but before I get into the review, I just wanted to talk a little bit about kind of my personal history with um, with the series. So I've been a Stephen King fan since I was about 13. I think that's the age I was when I read Christine, which was the first book I read by him. I remember buying a copy of The Gunslinger, the first book in the Dark Tower series, um, from this weird like discount supermarket that existed in the town that I grew up in. And I think I probably bought that when I was about 16 or 17. So late 80s, very early 90s, perhaps. Um, and I, I read it and was really struck by the fact that it felt very different from the other King books that I'd read. And it is. That first book in the series in particular feels quite different from a lot of his other stuff. Um, uh, but I was also struck by the fact that I liked it. There was something about it that kind of hooked me and, and really engaged me. Um, I then read the second book in the series, The Drawing of the Three. So I bought a copy of that when I was in the US. Um, which I, I travelled to the US in, in the year before I went to university. So that would have been kind of 91, 92, something like that. So I then read that one. I then read uh, the third book, The Wastelands, and uh, the fourth book, Wizard and Glass, um, re you know, reasonably soon after that. So around the time they came out. Um, and then I kind of like, fell out of love with King for a little bit. Um, so during kind of the the, the late 90s and early 2000s in particular, I just wasn't particularly reading his his stuff. I was reading other things and there's a kind of a backlog of stuff from, from that period that I just didn't read. And, and the final volumes in the Dark Tower series were very much part of that backlog. So I have now read them all in the last few months um, and have also read The Wind Through the Keyhole, um, which is a, a book that was published after he published the, the main seven books in the series, but takes, takes place kind of midway through the series. Um, and overall, I really, really enjoyed the series. As, as, you know, as I suggested at the start, I think there are definitely problems with it. I think there are things about it that are like symptomatic of, of some of the failings King has as a writer, but I also think it displays um, some of his real strengths as a writer as well as a series. So let me tell you briefly what it's about, if, if you don't know. Um, and as I say, I'll try and do this with, without any spoilers. There will be slight spoilers, though, because it's very well, it's pretty much impossible to talk about the series as a whole. Um, without talking about the fact that there are a number of characters who aren't in that first book, who join in, in the second book and are in, you know, for the rest of the series thereafter. So th the concept of the series is there's this kind of alternate world, um, which is like a weird mix of uh, kind of Western, uh, you know, Western um, like ideas and symbolisms, so, you know, gunfighters and things like that. The, the first book is called The Gunslinger, um, but also mixes in kind of Arthurian legend and kind of honour and things like that. Um, and there's this character called Roland who is a, gun, a gunslinger who in that first book is travelling across this kind of desert desert landscape following this guy, the man in black, who is who is trying to hunt down. So that's kind of what happens in, <clears throat> in the first book. So it's got the kind of this weird Western vibe. King has said that it was, you know, very much influenced by the films of Sergio Leone. And you can definitely see that. Um, in the second book, you meet these other characters and it turns out there are doorways between the world that Roland lives in and, and our world. 
and those doorways kind of interact with our world at different times, but all in kind of the, the second half of the, of the 20th century. So Roland meets these other characters who end up kind of joining him and going on this, this quest with him to track down the man in black and also get to the Dark Tower. Um, and there's this sense of the world that, you know, the world that Roland lives in is kind of crumbling and he needs to get to the Dark Tower in order to save it. And that really is is the series. So it's a strange mix of um, of kind of westerns and like fantasy. And it is, you know, it's an epic series. It's it's over four thousand pages long in total, um, and you know, it it does feel like an epic fantasy at times. In that it can be, in my opinion, a bit of a slog at times. Um, but it's also a lot of fun, and and it displays King's imagination. Um, you know, he, there's some really interesting stuff going on in this book. So there's some, there's a lot of fun horror stuff woven into them, um, but there's also just fun, you know, fantasy adventure type stuff. And one of the things that's really interesting about these books is how frequently guns feature in them. Guns are, you know, an absolutely central part of this series, as as you know, the name of the the first book, The Gunslinger, would suggest, which is unusual for King, because King's books very rarely feature guns. He's not someone, um, you know, as a as a, a 20th century American writer of what are, you know, like a pop, exciting popular fiction books. You know, the vast majority of American writers who write that kind of book feature guns a lot, even horror writers. Um, and King really doesn't. So it was interesting to see um, guns feature so prominently in these books. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of what the series is about. Let me tell you then why I think it's King at his best and also King at his worst. So let's get the, the worst bit out of the way first. So the things that the, there's two things really that I think are that, that are symptomatic of, of King, King the, the things I don't like about King's writing. So firstly is it's really, really long. As I've said, it's over 4,000 pages long and at times it feels padded, it feels stretched out. He goes off on wild tangents um, and it just feels, it does feel a little bit like hard work at times. It's always kind of interesting, um, but it's definitely longer than it needed to be. Um, and that is something that King is, you know, definitely prone to. Many of his books are very, very long. Few of his long books, you know, really justify their length. And I definitely think that's that's true of the Dark Tower series. I definitely, definitely think it could have done with some tighter editing. And it can be, you know, that's kind of King's self-indulgence. He just lets himself, you know, he, he his writing runs away with itself sometimes. And that can be charming at times. It can be interesting at times, but sometimes it, it feels a bit much. And I think that's true of the Dark Tower series. The other thing that I think is is slightly problematic about the series and problematic about King's work in general is and you know he's he's completely upfront about this but you know when he talks about his writing is he doesn't know where his books are going to go when he starts them um and you know he doesn't always do great endings I personally think the ending of the Dark Tower is good I really liked the ending and I'll talk more about the ending in the kind of spoiler section if you like of this video um, but you definitely get the impression that King didn't know where he was going with this. And that first book in particular feels very different from the rest of the books in the series. Um, so it goes all over the place at times. As I say, it goes on wild tangents. There, there are long sections of some of the books which are kind of flashbacks, which always feel like separate novels. Um, so it's, it's quite rambly quite long and you definitely get the impression that he had no idea where he, how, how he was going to end it when he started writing it and he talks about that in the introduction to the fifth book in the series so seven books in total the the final three books he wrote I think pretty much back to back so I think he'd been struggling with it he'd been you know he'd been trying to, to come up with endings for it things like that for a long time he wrote those first four books over a number of years over over decades um, and then the final three books, I think he, he something just clicked. He figured out where he wanted to take the series. He figured out how it was going to end. And he then wrote those final three books. Now, the problem with King's style of writing, that, that kind of, you know, start, come up with an idea, come up with some characters, start writing the story and see where it takes you, which, you know, has served him very, very well as a writer, let's be honest. The problem with that when you are writing a series is, unlike a novel where you can write a long novel, you can only figure out what the ending is going to be at the end, and you can then go back and tweak bits earlier on in the book to fit that ending, 
when you're writing a series and you've already got four of the books in the series published, you can't do that. So your hands are a bit more tied. Um, I'm not sure if that's necessarily a problem with The Dark Tower. And like I say, I do think the ending was good and I think it, it fitted with the rest of, of the books. But there are definitely, you know, big changes in, in tone and things like that as the series progresses. So that for me is is probably the biggest weakness of, of the books. More more so than, than the length is just they're a bit messy at times. Um, they go all over the place that, and, and those those tangents can be enjoyable at times but they're not always enjoyable. I certainly enjoyed some of them a lot more than others and I suspect that would probably be true for any reader. I doubt there are so many tangents in these books, I doubt that any anyone loved all of them. Let me talk very quickly about The Wind Through the Keyhole then. So this is a feels in many ways like a separate book but set in the same universe as i say king published it after the other books in the series um and it is it, it takes place kind of midway through the series but it doesn't really have spoilers for what's happened before or what or what happens after i read it after reading the best of the rest of the books in the series that was recommended to me by by viewers as the right way to do it and, I, and it does feel like it is the right way to do it it was very nice to kind of revisit the characters knowing how the series ended, to, to then go back and, and spend a bit of time with them. Um, but this this book isn't really about those those characters. It's uh, so, so it's got a really interesting structure, which I quite enjoyed, and it's essentially three separate stories. So you've got the wraparound story, which does feature you know the main characters from the rest of the series, but it focuses really on, on Roland the gunslinger, so that a large part of the book is him telling a story about something from his past, which is a really interesting, enjoyable story about him as a young gunslinger going with a, a colleague of his and investigating some deaths in a small town. So it's kind of a detective story. And I really, really, really enjoyed that part of it. And then within that story, you've got another story, which is this long uh, kind of fantasy story that very much plays into the whole kind of um, like ethos of, of the Dark Tower series as a whole, that kind of mythology. Um, that was the part of this book that I enjoyed the least, um, but it was still quite enjoyable. But it's an interesting structure for a book, and it was nice to see King go back to, to the universe that he created. And that probably also gives you a sense then of what I did like about the series. So two of the things in particular I really liked about the series are the, the characters and the central concept. So the universe that King creates in this series is really engaging and interesting. And the way he takes two different elements of, of popular culture, so, you know, kind of gunslingers and uh, like Arthurian legend, and mashes them together, reminded me a lot of what George Lucas did with Star Wars. So if you think about Star Wars, it takes, again, that kind of, um, kind of knights and honour and stuff like that and mashes that together with like World War II dogfighting movies. So King does something similar in the Dark Tower series and it's really engaging and effective and, and enjoyable. And I particularly liked the the Earth sequences, like the you know the Our World sequences of, in these books. There's something I love about that that kind of story where characters can flip between a different universe and our universe. I always find that fun and engaging, and King does it really really well in this series. It's it's always nice to when those characters flip between the two different worlds, and it's a good way of of telling a story because you can you can build up tension in one world and then flip to the other world and, and show what's going on there and the reader will want to keep on reading to get back to to the tension you left in in the other world so it makes for you know really engaging storytelling and i did enjoy it and there are also in this some fantastic kind of set pieces so because you come to know the characters really well because you you come to enjoy spending time with them because because you come to care about them when they are in peril um, it can be really, really tense, really enjoyable. Um, so there's there's a lot that's great in here. And some of the action sequences are just phenomenal. They're just really, really engaging and entertaining and, and cinematically written. Um, so, yeah, those are the things I really, really liked about the, about the series. And those are things generally that I really like about King's writing. I think he, he typically does all of those things really, really well. And I think that's one of the reason why, reasons why he is, you know, such a beloved storyteller. Um, so... Right, so I've got to the end now of the spoiler-free part of the video. Um, so if you haven't yet read the series and you intend to, stop watching now because um, I'm going to get into spoilers.
Okay, so there were two things in particular that I wanted to talk about in this spoiler section of the video. So, th so the first is the ending. So I know some people didn't like the ending. I actually thought it was really good. There were t and, and it felt like a very natural ending to the series. So I think the two things I particularly liked about it are, I like the fact that, that he gradually killed off the central characters, but then was able to, in a logical way, kind of bring them back at the end. So he didn't truly bring them back because it was different versions of, of them. But the fact that he was able to, to bring them back um, and you felt that their lives continued, you know, in a way, and that they were together, I thought was 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 a nice ending. It was It was moving, it was sweet, but it didn't feel too forced, to me at least. The other part of it that I really liked was was Roland's ending. So I love the concept of Roland just like in a loop, basically, just having to do this again and again and again. That felt to me like it really fit well with Roland's character. And if you think about Roland in that very first book, just, you know, doggedly, you know, walking across the desert because that's his duty, because that's what he has to do. It felt very natural to me that, that Roland's ending would be an ending where he doesn't get a break. He just has to keep on saving the world, basically. So I really I really did like the ending a lot. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about then was, was King being a character in the books, that whole kind of metafiction thing, which I had mixed feelings about. So at times I found it a bit self-indulgent and irritating, if I'm completely honest. But at other times I thought it, it genuinely worked really well. And I did like the concept of, you know, King, like, like this story flowing through King and, and that being why it's ended up, you know, there's ended up being bits of it in so many of his other books that kind of made a, a kind of logical sense to me. So I did quite like that. But equally, I did feel it was a bit self-indulgent at times. It's it's always a bit weird when authors do that. There's a couple of other authors I've, I've, I've enjoyed over the years who do that. So one is one is Clive Cussler, who does it in not nearly as big a way as King does it in The Dark Tower. So Clive Cussler has come to or came to towards the end of his of his life feature himself as a character in his book so most of his books are about this this guy called Dirk Pitt who like goes on adventures and at times in the book Dirk in some of the books Dirk Pitt will meet a character called Clive Cussler who like helps him out and gives him advice and stuff like that and that to me always felt super super cheesy and, and annoying um the other guy who does this is Ed McBain, my, my favourite writer, who, do, who never featured as a character in his books, but he in, definitely injects bits of himself into his books. And one of the things he does is, um, in, in the later books in the 87th Precinct series, and indeed in the Matthew Hope series as well, if ever the date, I think I'm going to get the date wrong now, I think it's the 15th of October, which was Evan Hunter, Ed McBain's date of birth. Whenever that date is mentioned or comes up in a book people refer to it as the birth date of great men which again is kind of cheesy but it's not nearly as in your face as what Clive Cussler did um, so I, I, I kind of give McBain a pass on that one I thought that was I thought that was quite nice um, but yeah King weaving himself into his own story did did make sense I, I did particularly enjoy the scenes when um, when Eddie and Roland go and like visit King and speak to him and and the whole the whole thing about the car accident and things like that in particular I thought was was really well done I thought that was quite interesting the the one thing I didn't I, I wasn't too sure about was this this whole concept which which gets talked about in the book of like the you know deus, deus ex, ex machina the god out of the machine the fact that writers can put something you know can, can help their characters out um because you know, they're in control of the universe. And there's some bits where, you know, King literally does that to help the characters in the story get, you know, get past the block and they're up against. Which, in a way, I thought was an interesting idea and, and kind of worked okay. But then you've also got this sense that, and, you know, King talks about this in the books, that, that he is not in control of the story, that the story is just flowing through him that he's having to tell the story and, he, and he, he's not guiding it. So how those two things work together, I'm not quite sure because it kind of feels like they conflict with each other a little bit. So I wasn't too, I wasn't too sure about that. But overall, I thought that the, um, you know, that King's injection of, him, of, of himself as a character into the books worked, worked okay. What I wasn't sure about was all the other parts of 
popular culture and how they end up in the book, like all the Harry Potter references and the the references to Shardick and things like that. I kind of I kind of got it, but it didn't feel like he he wrapped that up that neatly. He didn't really I I felt properly explain why those things were there. And I guess there's just, you know, this kind of bleeding of things between the different worlds. Um, but but that side of it, I wasn't too sure about, if I'm honest. Okay, so those are my thoughts on the Dark Tower series. This this review has been 35 years in the making. Uh, it's taken me that long to, to read the series, but I'm really glad that I finished it. I did, uh, you know, despite some of my reservations about it, I did really, really enjoy it overall. I, I, if I was to rate it, I would give it overall four stars. I don't think it's King's best work. Um, I think there are other things by him that work better. I do think he's he's at his best when he's reined in a bit and when he when he writes shorter, tighter books. Um, but I did think overall this was a, a fun, enjoyable adventure. Um, I can forgive it its flaws because the good parts of it were so good. Anyway, do let me know in the comments what you think of the Dark Tower series. Do try and avoid spoilers um, for anyone who may see your comment who hasn't yet read the series. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.